Welcome to Moo Moo Math. Today we're going to look at quadrilaterals and the different types of quadrilaterals. Okay, a quadrilateral is just a four-sided polygon. So any polygon that has four sides. And I've drawn several up here to show you. Now they come in different categories. Okay, the first one is our generic, does it have four sides? And notice all of these all have four sides. Now, out of that, they actually break down into other categories called parallelograms, and that's a subgroup of a quadrilateral, and then trapezoids, and that is a subgroup of quadrilaterals. So let's look at how that's broken down. So here's our quadrilateral family, and out of our family, besides some that just are traditional quadrilaterals that don't fall into these categories, you can have parallelograms, and under parallelograms you can have rectangles and rhombuses, and then you can also have squares, and squares have all the characteristics of both of these. And then you have trapezoids. Trapezoids can be isosceles or regular, and there are videos about these separate ones, but this one's just an overview. And this diagram is really helpful to see how the quadrilateral family kind of falls into place. So let's look at our shapes we have and see what category they would fall into. Okay, this first one, we have three, four right angles, one side of five, one side of eight. This side has to be a five, and this side has to be an eight. That's a rectangle, isn't it? And a rectangle is also a parallelogram, so these sides are parallel, and these sides are parallel. So that's a parallelogram, and that's actually a rectangle. Okay, this one down here, these two sides are parallel because they're marked with arrows. These two sides are parallel because they're marked with arrows. That one's a rhombus. I always call that a squished square. Notice it has, um, or actually this is not a rhombus, this is just a plain old parallelogram. Uh, the opposite sides are parallel, but we don't know if those sides are congruent. So it can't be a rhombus because we don't know if the sides are congruent. So it's just what we call a parallelogram. Okay, this one, hmm, the sides aren't parallel, but it does have four sides. So this is just our plain old quadrilateral. It doesn't fall into one of our special categories. Okay, over here we have these two sides that are parallel to each other. These two aren't parallel to each other, so that's a trapezoid. So that's just a trapezoid. That looks like it could be an isosceles. It's not marked. Isosceles would mean that these two sides are the same. It wasn't marked, so I wasn't sure. And then this one, these two sides are parallel. These two don't look parallel, do they? But we don't know. This one's a trapezoid. So there you go. That's how you decide what category your quadrilaterals fall into. So let's look at the family tree one more time. Okay, so we have quadrilaterals, and some just fall into this big generic pool. Then some are special parallelograms where the opposite sides are parallel, and rectangles are parallelograms, rhombuses are parallelograms, and squares are parallelograms. And then you've got trapezoids, and trapezoids are, par are quadrilaterals, but they only have one pair of sides that are parallel. And you can have a regular trapezoid, similar to this one, or you can have an isosceles trapezoid, which you have two parallel sides and then two congruent sides. So if you, that's what an isosceles trapezoid would look like. So, hope this video was helpful.